Hello students, let's begin with the another chapter of sub topic of the lesson Manchester comes to India. Now what is mean by Manchester? Manchester is a city in England which is very famous for the textile industries all over the world. In, during the industrial revolution or industrialization, Manchester became an important center of textile industries in Europe and most of the manufacturing products which prepared or manufactured in Manchester were largely exported to different countries including India. So therefore, the title says that Manchester comes to India means the manufacturing cloth, the manufacturing products which manufactured in Manchester textile industries came in India and it captured the Indian market system and its people. So, in 1772, Henry Petulo, the company official, had mentioned that uh, the, 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 the cotton export from India to Britain could never be used because no other nation produced such a good quality, such a high quality of cotton like India. Most of the coarse cotton usually came from different countries, but finest variety usually came from India. We already discussed about it. But you might be knowing that the cotton is goods from uh, India to England, especially to Britain, pay dramatically. In 1811 and 12, the cost of these goods from, uh, from India to Britain was 33%. It was 33%. In 1811 to 1812, the cotton piece from India to Britain was 33%. But by 1850, 1850, it was no more than 3%. We see that India exporting under the colonial government, India exporting cotton piece goods or finest variety of cotton in 1811 and 12, it was up to 33%. But in 1850, it was no more than 3%. What happened this? Why happened this? Because uh, uh, earlier there were 33% cotton piece goods. Piece goods were going from India to Britain. But by 1850, it was up to 3%. Means there was long decline of cotton piece goods uh, from India to Britain. Why did this happen? What were its implications? And what causes that finest variety of cotton piece goods from India decline at so low level? Because as cotton industries developed in England, industrial groups in England began pressurizing government to increase tariff and to increase taxes on the import which is coming from other countries uh, to England because uh, there, there, there was high flow of cotton piece goods from other countries to England especially uh, Manchester therefore most of the industrial groups they began worrying that if, uh, if there, there would be continuous flow of cotton piece goods from other countries to England then it, it would be difficult for them survive in the, in, in, um, in the industrial period in the Manchester and it was also difficult for them to earn uh, uh, proper and great profit. So uh, there was loss for them for a uh, uh, long period of time. That is why in, uh, man, uh, industrial groups in England began pressurizing the government to increase taxes on imports so that Manchester goods could sell in the market without facing any competition from outside. So therefore, therefore the cotton piece goods from India uh, decreased from 33% to 3% within, uh, within the span of uh, 40, 30, 5 to 40 years. So another important uh, reason why this was also declined up to 3% because industrial groups at the same time, they also uh, persuaded East India Company, the major and important a powerful company of the trade persuaded them to sell Manchester goods in the Indian market. Not only in Manchester or in European countries, but Manchester goods would uh, sell in the Indian market. This type of system, this type of this type of uh, system was also insisted to the company to apply or implement in the Indian market system. 
so therefore what happened when manchester goods be began coming from manchester uh, or england to india that time these machine made goods were so cheap that indian weavers and cottagers began closing down their workshop because their cloth or their uh, products were uh, costly because they prepared these in the products by hand with their domestic uh, units but the manchester goods came in, in indian market were machine made goods and they were so cheap that is why cotton weavers faced various problems after this incident what are the problems number 1 their local market shrank and export market collapsed cotton weavers faced one problem important that is their local market shrank and export market collapsed being related to the manchester goods second important uh, produced by machines the machine made goods were so cheap that indian weavers indian weavers could not compete with them and therefore by 18 by 1850 It is there were many reports which narrated the stories of decline and dissolutions. As I as I already uh, told you that by 1850 the cotton is goods lower down up to three percent because we already discussed the various reasons that in, uh, industrialist groups in England began pressurizing the government to increase the taxes so that uh, uh, import should stop or there should be uh, uh, less flow of imports from other countries. And same at the same time, the com uh, the company was persuaded, company was convinced by the industrial groups to sell Manchester goods in Indian market. Therefore, there were many problems which faced by cotton weavers in India. So, dear students, keep in mind this very important questions are uh, in the context of board exam. Explain the problems faced by cotton weavers in India. Number one, their export market collapsed and local market sham being related with the Manchester imports. Second. The uh, Manchester goods produced by machines was so cheap that Indian weavers could not compete with them. And third, by 1850s there were many uh, reports which narrated the stories of decline and dissolution. Another problem uh, which uh, Indian weavers also faced that uh, when American Civil War broke out and uh, the cotton supply from US was cut up, that time Britain turned to India. It, uh, keep in mind that uh, India was not only uh, a single country which provides or supplies raw material uh, as a uh, raw material to the British cotton industry, but there were many countries, including Africa, uh, South America countries, and uh, North American countries uh, were also included in supplying the raw cotton to British cotton industry. So when American Civil War broke out, the cotton supply from US was cut up. So Britain turned to India, and when Britain turned to India, it and there was great demand for the cotton, and therefore what happened? The cotton prices increased very uh, fast. The, the the prices of cotton, uh, raw cotton, uh, shot up, and therefore weavers who who were not having so much money, they could not uh, purchase the cotton at exorbitant prices, at high prices. So therefore, many uh, cotton weavers closed down their workshop. They shut down their workshop and they returned uh, to their uh, old and uh, old works, which was not uh, sufficient, which was not enough for their family demands. So in this way, uh, there were various problems faced by cotton weavers in India. So uh, next important part that we will discuss is who were. the indian industrialists or indian entrepreneurs who set up industries where did uh, they accumulated the wealth and where did the workers come from the next part is fourth part is factories come up factories come up. now there are three questions that we are going to explore number one who were industrialists second from where they had accumulated wealth and third from where did 
वर्कर्स कम फ्रॉम दिस थ्री क्वेश्चन नाउ हु इंडियन इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट हु सेटअप दी इंडस्ट्रीज इन इंडिया यू माइट नो दैट द्वारकानाथ टागोर द्वारकानाथ टागोर हु सेटअप सिक्स जॉइंट स्टॉक कंपनीज इन बेंगाल he accumulated the wealth from trading in the china and other uh, eastern countries so keep in mind dwarana tower who made his fortune to set up industries six joint stock companies in bengal uh, and he usually uh, accumulated or collected wealth from china next jenta and dicha state these two famous industrialists uh, established huge industrial empire in bombay and i'll say hukum jan a marwari businessman who also set up first jute mill in kolkata and the fathers as well as grandfathers of famous industrialist gd birla these were the indian entrepreneurs who set up industries in india first Uh, usually they accumulated the wealth from china producing with the china and other uh, myanmar burma and many other countries so this accumulation of wealth they collected was the very important part which they engaged and involved in the china trade as you know that in uh, britain the colonial government in india they uh, began trading with the china burma uh, and many other uh, southeast asian countries so therefore in this trading activities gd the famous uh, industrialists such as dwarana tata dilshad peti jain tata jamshed ji nusrawati tata and other famous uh, industrialists played a junior roles financing the production supply uh, materials or supplying production from one place to another place and transferring funds and many more things so by this uh, trading activities they accumulated the wealth and set up various industries in that now from where they had accumulated wealth we already discussed by trading with the china by trading with the britain by trading with the burma that is myanmar and by trading with the south east asian countries and some uh, some uh, local traders and merchants were also play, uh, engaged uh, in the trade within the countries and they accumulated the wealth and tried to set up various industries so these were the uh, important incidents that uh, in how industrialization came to india and from where did workers come from the workers usually came from nearby villages or nearby district for example when cotton textile industries was started or began producing its products in bombay most of the industrial workers usually came from ratnagiri district and other districts which is uh, located near the bombay even in the similar way when uh, when uh, one uh, um, textile industry was set up in kanpur uttar pradesh most of the workers usually came from the villages within the kanpur district so in this way wherever industries were set up the workers usually came from nearby villages for example if industry would start in garcholi from where did workers come from the workers uh, usually come from the nearby villages of garcholi so in a similar way when various industries were set up in india the workers usually came from nearby districts or nearby villages in the particular place so after this uh, when the vast opportunities of industries opened the number of workers began migrating from their own villages from their own district to work in the uh, industries and they travel long distances along with their family carrying their luggage and uh, food items with them to settle in the industrial area for the survival so these were important uh, incidents that took place during the industrial phase in india but after uh, you might you we, we already discussed that when there when there were uh, more workers but jobs were always low even even the factories were multiplied factories were established in a large number but still there were less job jobs as compared to workers therefore getting job in the industries was difficult and uh, everyone could not easily get job those who had some friends and relatives 
were more likely to get jobs in industries. Therefore, there was one person in India who was usually employed by the industrialists. He was most trusted and old worker, usually called jobber. Job. What is meant by jobber? Jobber means a person who gives job in the industry is known as job. Now, industrialists and um, uh, traders usually appointed uh, old and trusted worker of the industries as jobber, the senior most worker of in the industry as jobber. And uh, what is the function of uh, jobber? The functions of jobber that he got uh, people from his village, he ensured them jobs, helped them settle in the city, and provided money in times of crisis. These were important functions of the jobber. It means jobber um, were appointed by the industrialists to get people from villages to work in the industry. So there were once again there were four functions. Jobber got people from his village. He um, travelled many villages to uh, ask people to come and work in the industry. So he got people from his village, ensured them job that, that definitely I will give jobs in the industry. Uh, Help them settle in the cities. In the cities, there the, the city was unknown or stranger to the workers and laborers. There that that time, Jawar was helping such workers to settle in the cities and provided money in times of crisis. If they find any difficulties, financial problems or economic problems, that time Jawar uh, providing money to uh, in times of crisis to these workers. Therefore, what happened finally? Jawar became the person of authority. And later he began demanding the gifts and other important uh, food items for his favor because he, he realized he himself realized that I am the person who, who are giving jobs to many people. So therefore he automatically uh, uh, raised as the authority person, powerful person, and he began demanding from the workers who wanted jobs in the industries, gifts and other food items for his favor. So these were important uh, implications and these were important incidents or events that shaped the Indian industrialization and a multiplied factors in, num in number of ways and also shaped the Indian economy in uh, various ways of this industrialization period. I hope you have understood this part well. Uh, read the lesson once again and explore more uh, aspects of this particular part. Thank you.